How's it going everybody? Josh, KI6NAZ. I threw my back out on the way um, back from, from Utah on that trip to Fieldcraft Survival. So I thought I'd make a simple, easy video uh, today. We're gonna be talking about the TYT UV88. A competitor to the Baofeng. Could you say it's the best Baofeng? Or the best radio at the $25 entry point that this thing seems to find itself on Amazon? Well, let's find out. And if you enjoy these kind of video reviews, make sure to click the thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm that you like it, and maybe click subscribe. It's free, and if you don't like it, you can always unclick it. Thanks. Here's the deal with reviewing radios like these, and I'll tell you because I've reviewed a lot of them. At some point, you say to yourself and to you watching me, I say to you, that's how that works, right? Boy, this is really just like a Baofeng. Um, that's and that's basically where the video can end because at some point you say that's oh, kind of like a Baofeng. So really, it comes down to like the aesthetics of the radio. Do, do you like the way the radio looks? Um, are there little quirks and things, kinks in it that you don't like that you like the Baofeng more? I personally think the Baofeng, the look of the Baofeng, is starting to kind of age poorly. It's aging more like vinegar than fine wine at this point to me. I think this radio looks actually pretty good. Again, TYT UV88. There are two primary differences that I see to this radio, to that of a Baofeng, that would make this a compelling radio to possibly you. The price is the same. The menu system is basically identical. You click the menu button, which is the F in this case, and then you push one of the buttons on the faceplate, or you go up and down the list, uh, up and down the arrows until you find what you're looking for. The major big thing that this has going for it, and this is like possibly the thing that will make it really good for everyone who may already have a lot of HTs, SMA female. For some reason, they went SMA female on this, which means everyone who has a Japanese radio or similar radio, uh, like the Wushans, that kind of thing, this works. Works perfectly with those antennas. So if you haven't bought into the whole Chinese uh, SMA male, then uh, you're gonna be right at home with this. 25 bucks, it's kind of hard to beat. Now the other thing this has going for it, uh, this is not a plus for me really, but I mention it for completeness. This comes with the programming cable in the box. It has the standard Baofeng accoutrement, and I know I keep saying Baofeng, I know this is a TYT, but if you're gonna fight in the $25 to $30 range, you better be bringing the same game as the Baofeng. And it seems to at this point, plus it has the cheap programming cable. This will not work for most of you, okay? So yeah, it's a perk for some, but for most, you're still gonna need the FTDI cable that I talk about in all my video that I cover programming of Baofengs and, and other Chinese radios and even some Japanese radios. Chirp with an FTDI cable gets the job done. The other, actually, so three things. I forgot about that programming cable, actually. The other thing that's a big, I think, a big upgrade, 200 memory channels instead of 125. So you get 75 more memory channels and SMA female in a basically better looking radio, at least I think so. This has one of those batteries that the, the clip mounts to the battery and you can swap them out. Some people hate that, so that would be a downside. So you actually screw the, the pocket clip or belt clip onto the battery and so you would have to have multiple belt clips if you wanted to do multiple batteries with this. Bit of an advantage is that this has a little bit of IPV rating, so you can splash it and it won't get too upset with you with Baofeng. The Baofeng is resistant enough that I don't think people care what its rating is. If it gets splashed, nobody cares. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit better than the Baofeng. I don't know how much. I don't even know if that's really worth spending a lot of time talking about, to be honest. There is one downside to this. This is kind of a businessy radio, so you're gonna have to run this with your amateur radio license on the ham bands, mind you. Otherwise you get into all those troubles if you're trying to use it in other spaces it's not certified for. This comes locked to memory only mode. You have to hold down the one and seven key while turning the radio on to open up the VFO. Once that's done though, the programming that you would load on this becomes available and you can go into VFO mode and do scanning or you know, whatever. It, it basically turns it back into a full functioning Baofeng uh, in equivalent user interface type stuff. Now, because I mentioned this is a business radio, technically that's what this is really designed to be. There are a couple of features in here that you shouldn't use 
on amateur radio. The first is that this has a scrambler function built into it. I'm going to demonstrate transmitting into this with an FM radio, just a Baofeng uh, using my call sign, and I'm going to let you hear what this sounds like on the output. Uh, you would need another one of these if you wanted to decode the scrambling, but that would be illegal on the amateur radio bands. So keep that in mind. This is not a recommendation. I'm just telling you that that's available. Also, this has a stun kill mode that you can activate if you are wanting to deactivate a radio that um, was on the same memory channel or whatnot. Also something you probably wouldn't do on amateur radio. Consider though, this is a designed to be used in a business type environment. And if you had 10 of these and one of them gets out, uh, somebody has it, you don't want them to have it anymore. Maybe the person quit. It's a it's a uh, upset ex-employee. You can stun kill, uh, you can murder death kill. MDK. Murder, death, kill, murder, kill. Murder, death, kill. Last Without having to try and take it back from them, etc. So you kill the memory channels on it. So let's take it over to the desktop and we will do a test of its spurious emissions. We'll also do an audio test against a Baofeng, just so you get an idea of what sounds like what coming back and forth from what. Now I'm gonna be transmitting Baofeng into the UV88 and vice versa. So you can always say like, well, one of these has a bad mic. I appreciate that. In the future, I'll possibly buy two of whatever radio I'm testing, particularly 25 bucks, who cares? And then uh, that way we'll at least be comparing apples to apples and vice versa. So apologize on this first round, but we know what to do in the future. All right, let's see, is this the Wonder Fang? Fang killer when it comes to spurious emissions? Let's see, I have this set to 146 megahertz as the uh, fundamental frequency or starting point. The tiny SA does top out at 350 megahertz before it switches over to its high side. And the high side doesn't go low enough to capture um, where we're at with two meters, but we'll test this on 70 centimeters too. So here we go, first test. And you can see the fundamentals right there, followed by first harmonic spur, uh, which is about 50 dB, negative 50 dB in comparison to zero um, off the fundamental. So um, the lowest point is negative 70 dB, goes up to zero, and there's a first harmonic on negative 50. I think that's borderline passing. Somebody in the comments will correct me, um, but I think that's borderline. Out of curiosity, I also have a Baofeng here. This is just an off-the-shelf UV5R. And uh, I'm not claiming this is uh, lab-level testing, by the way. This is testing with a tiny SA, a $50 um, <laughs> spectrum analyzer. So you can uh, imagine that we're not going to get perfect results. So here we go. Ready? What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? There's your fundamental. No spurs. Look at that. Nothing. Uh, maybe a little bit. Wow, off the shelf Baofeng. Let's flip it over to the high side. Okay. So the fundamental is here. You can see it, but look at all the spurs. Look at all that. Look at all the harmonics. Uh, this f looks like fourth harmonic. No, it's like the fifth. Look how high that is. That is not passing uh, the test. Not at all. Uh, let's try the Baofeng. I don't know, the Baofeng is doing pretty good. You know, sometimes, and this is a new Baofeng. This is a Baofeng that I got for Leia when she passed her, her tech test. So far, this is like the cleanest Baofeng I've ever seen in my life. And this is just an Amazon UV5R. Ooh. So not great, this is also a failure. Negative 60, negative 55 against zero. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, not good. Anyway, that's a lot of mess. Okay. Kilo India, 6 November Alpha Zulu, transmitting from the FT3DR into the TYT UV82. Test, test. Kilo India, 6 November Alpha Zulu, radio test, radio test. Test, 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 test. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Kilo in the six meter room is in the same year. Call, 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 call. Line of all time. That's the room door at all. Feel the line on screen. I'm going on. So what do I think about the TYT UV88? It seems like it has a couple of incremental steps from a Baofeng. It doesn't do anything revolutionary in that space for $25. I think it looks much better than the Baofeng. I like the antenna connector. I like that it has 200 memory channels, although I really wasn't that bothered by 125 in the case of the Baofeng. 
Although that starts getting a little low when you want to have different uh, memory groups, which neither one of these radios has, so it's kind of a moot point on that one. Um, I would probably give it the nod if except it wasn't for those spurious emissions, which I still think is a problem with many Chinese radios, and it's a crapshoot on which ones are good with, um, with their spurious emissions. So if you are worried about signal purity, which I think everyone should be, you don't want to be transmitting you know, out of band of where you're at or creating interference that, you know, really could mess with somebody else's day, then maybe skip all of them <laughs> entirely. It's kind of tough to buy a Baofeng off of Amazon, get it tested, and then if you find out it's no good, what do you do? Hey, Amazon, send this back. It's got spurious emissions. I can't use it. I guess you could do that. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, click the thumbs up. Click subscribe if you have not already. And click the bell and enable those notifications because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I post at least one video a week. And then Ham Nation every other week. So a lot of content. Hope you come back to watch some of that. And I'll talk to you later. See ya. And stay tuned after this video because right after this premieres, another one for me is premiering right after it on what I think of the state of Baofeng in 2021. And I have some thoughts that I would like to share. So if you're interested, stick around.